and we're back with one of my crazy rants again. So, uh, one of my good friends and I were chatting the other day, and, you know, just almost out of nowhere, uh, he's like, hey dude, like, can you help me with some advice for, like, a practice routine? And I'm like, sure, uh, what exactly, or more specifically, would you need help with? And basically, he kind of went ahead and he, like, the, the way he laid out the uh, the argument was uh, like screaming for one video because it was like very neatly arranged like one of those classic uh, you know FAQ questions and he said well I don't know uh, any type of structure because every time I uh, put myself through the practice of you know just uh, getting down and practicing something, I just get bored somehow because I have the impression that, uh, you know, uh, everything that I'm doing, I'm doing, you know, without any uh, direction or, or guidance and eventually it leads me to going nowhere. Uh, and I, yeah, he says, because uh, I'm just trying to uh, read off screen here, he says uh, it would be much easier to just follow a template. And oh yeah, and he says uh, something general purpose. Uh, I wouldn't go too much into study. I just want something to keep myself warm enough. Um, so yeah, that's why I wanted to to do this uh, video because actually this is more common than you'd think. And obviously I have the same thing uh, myself every now and then and I had it many times before hence I have a few suggestions that can keep you out of this uh, zone let's say so probably all of us at one point or another have seen all those you know cool great wonderful programs out there for you know learning guitar uh, and they have uh, you know several types of formulas that you can find everywhere whether it's uh, YouTube channels or whatever uh, out, you know other outlets of uh, guitar instructional programs uh, they might sound something like I don't know six week uh, I don't know six week shred programs or courses for mastering the fretboard or everything about arpeggios you know beginner to advanced or what else pentatonic mastery course or sweep pick fundamentals or you know a hundred uh, classic rock riffs or licks or whatever and yeah just um, you know basically all of these programs are great uh, and they might come from you know respectable platform platforms uh, like I don't know, Lick Library, uh, JTC, you know, Jam Track Central, uh, famous YouTube channels, uh, including, you know, uh, respectable artists as well, such as, uh, you know, Andy James, Paul Gilbert, John Petrucci, etc. And they all uh, are great, like I've said. However, uh, it is up to you, the uh, consumer, to kind of find the missing fundamental flaw that they have and it's not actually their flaw it's more like uh, a flaw on your side if you're not doing it right as opposed to a flaw in their approach because they're just putting uh, you know great content out there and I have a very good example uh, a great analogy uh, the reason why I didn't mention, for example, uh, guys like Michelangelo Video is because I wanted to uh, save him uh, as a uh, as an example of two of these things that you have to combine in order to make a successful practice routine for yourself. So one great example is that you have, for example, one program which is uh, called Speed Lives from one artist, which is Michelangelo Video, MAB. On one platform uh, which is metal method uh, and which creates you know the basically it creates the desire to learn uh, a song and the need to study but it only shows you the parts it doesn't hold your hand at every step of the way you know what I'm saying so for example 
uh, what strike me uh, what strikes me the most is a very very uh, important mention that Michael uh, does in the beginning of the uh, program itself which is this we're going to do something different in this program I've written a song and divided it into 27 parts once you're done with these parts you can play a finished piece of music rather than playing 27 exercises that you'll never use so as you can see uh, he kind of uh, you know hints you towards the fact that you need uh, you need to have this mindset whenever you're approaching guitar practice because he has another program which is again one program uh, this time it's uh, it's called Speed Kills from one artist the same Michelangelo Badio on one platform the same platform uh, Metal Method which shows you all of the intricacies of guitar playing and walks you through all of the uh, techniques that you need however it doesn't give you any frame of reference by itself in that isolated context. And as Michael always says, I'm going to give you the keys to the Lamborghini. But again, you need to sort of combine his, uh, you know, his mindset from speed kills with the mindset from speed lifts. So what I wanted to show to you by giving you the same artist, the same pro uh, program, uh, you know, or platform, uh, you know, media outlet, and uh, all of these things. I, I just wanted to make like a counterpart so that you under, you can understand it. It's not the uh, it's it's not the instructor. It's not the platform. Uh, it's nobody's fault for the missing link that eventually develops throughout your progress. It's up to you to sort of make this intelligent bind inside of your, let's say, uh, daily schedule. So. Uh, again, back to the problem. You want to make a sort of uh, easy enough, let's say, frame of reference so that you don't get easily bored, but you still have the uh, feeling of uh, progressing and also you never lose this desire to pick up the guitar and spend quite enough time of the day uh, practicing. So, just to further prove my point, you can go anywhere online and I can also make videos where for example I give you one exercise like this I can even give you another exercise which is again found in many places and it's uh, thought out to be like one of the fundamentals Another one. And another one. ever telling you where these things will come across in your guitar playing or if you'll ever need them at all again back to my uh, well back to Michael's point from from uh, speed lives right you need to make sure that whatever you're practicing will sooner than later uh, help you directly don't just practice uh, you know, general purpose things uh, which hopefully will improve your overall skills and later 
in life when you will want to pick up a song to play you'll all of a sudden be able to you know not stress that much and have it uh, you know down in no time that'll never happen so uh, what I wanted to tell you is that eventually you need to learn a song or set a goal for you to learn this song and then that song and so on in my experience the only thing that motivates me to stick to my guitar playing is you know just having like a backlog of songs or if you don't want to have a backlog because that can be stressful by itself you just have to focus on at least one song and set a goal for yourself to uh, you know either learn the whole song from top to bottom which is the greatest satisfaction that you can get or at least uh, just learn for example the rhythm part or the solo but it should be the whole rhythm part or the whole solo you don't just want to have bits and pieces because that's where the frustration comes from right I mean you you have all these uh, you know scattered uh, licks that you never fundamentally hone into anything uh, that materializes into something cool and my suggestion is for the time being whenever you feel like you're stuck in this kind of you know depressive uh, I don't want to really work out although I want to work out but you know I don't I'm kind of lazy but not lazy but it, you know that sort of rut that you you can very easily get stuck into whenever you're in this stage uh, just banish those thoughts of but I don't want to play covers I don't want to play other people's uh, music that's bullshit first of all think of the the, the following thing uh, 99 to 100 percent of us started playing guitar because we wanted to play that song from that artist or from that band we wanted to play the music that we grew up with right but very soon after what happens is usually we kind of get up into our ego and it's like you know well I don't wanna uh, and, and this is actually what what happens because it's um, it's like a subconscious excuse that wants you to deviate from having to spend all of those nights you know practicing what everyone out there is doing and it's you know hard guitar playing and what happens is as soon as you have something going on you just want to use that very limited skill set and now do something of your own because now that's easy right and by the way this is not about Robert I know him very well uh, he, he doesn't have this problem he, he's actually very inclined to, to, to playing all sorts of cool music but I, I was just digressing for, for a bit so uh, again don't get any general purpose guitar programs uh, unless you need them for playing a known song already that you have on your list all your you know you already have something in mind for them uh, maybe for for your own composition or whatever but again I, I would advise you to stay away from it right so this applies to those of you who are in Robert's case and in my case and in many of our uh, our cases not the the guys who somehow have the uh, mental uh, you know drill of practicing no matter what right so yeah uh, if you have this problem follow this advice which is a very fundamental one always try to have a goal so that the means of getting to that goal actually makes sense but it you know otherwise you will kind of find yourself in a situation where it's like you know with uh, with the, the the keys from the Lamborghini you have the keys but you don't have the car right so Michael in my opinion gives you the keys to the Lamborghini on uh, speed kills however he gives you the Lamborghini itself in uh, programs such as speed lives right so uh, I have also uh, very small tips for you uh, which should go hand in hand with uh, with what I just said you know choosing a song always to to help inspire you to stick to your goals so yeah uh, some of the tips that I have are uh, well first of all whatever you're practicing uh, again it's very hard to lock yourself in your house and endlessly practice to a metronome 
if you don't even know when or how uh, you will ever use this particular piece of music or lick or whatever so uh, that's one of them uh, second put it into muscle memory don't ever try to uh, you know play notes consciously like use your analytical and cognitive skills whenever you're analyzing why is it that you cannot play this in the first place you know feel free to analyze whether you do this legato or alternate picking or economy you know picking or what sort of pick slant you're using uh, are you coming on a upstroke or downstroke or whatever use that in the first stage however once you have it figured out for your particular uh, you know fingers and the way your brain is kind of wired to 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 play this the uh, easiest way once you have this down and figured out my advice is always try to put this into muscle memory you never want to uh, you know pay attention to all of the minutia that goes on because at fast speeds you'll never be able to keep track and what you'll find is you know you'll be in the middle of the phrase and all of a sudden you'll just lose track and everything will just go down crashing and burning so yeah that's uh that's a very important one another one is uh you know number three if i can say so treat it uh, yeah it's and this is again very fundamental treat things as a whole chunk do not focus on individual notes and what i mean by this is when you have you know long solos or complex you know pieces think of for example no boundaries from michelangelo or far beyond the sun from ingve malmsteen do you think they actually memorize every note and they're trying to remember like real time what happens with every note of course they didn't they always and this applies in all areas of learning in life not just guitar playing you always want to group as many things into bigger and bigger chunks so that instead of having like a trillion notes in one song you have for example 20 parts and each part is probably I don't know uh, two bars for example and each bar although it might have I don't know eight notes it's one lick actually that you have practiced over and over so instead of you know uh, memorizing one trillion pieces that go at blazing fast speed uh, you actually have 20 uh, fundamental blocks that you've practiced all over uh, the neck you know over and over again and now you're just chaining them because it's very easy to you know just go like okay this is one chunk here comes the second chunk and now I have this third chunk and the fourth chunk and so on right so it's a lot easier to to always learn like this try to group the bigger the uh the grouping the bigger the the, the information chunk and the less fragmentation it has uh the better and the easier uh, the easiest right uh so number four always find something you can do in the meantime like i said once you have this down uh and you no longer need to pay uh you know attention consciously right uh, you just work like uh, I don't know you just drill everything while watching I don't know an episode of, of like your favorite show or uh, just watch something on YouTube or whatever right just find something that takes your mind away from the torture of you know I'm just beginning and I'm at the fourth repetition of what I want it to be a thousand right that will just uh, you know make you go insane and you'll just get very discouraged because you have to do this every night and it's so boring and you want to do something else and that's where it all falls apart so always try to find something that you can do in the meantime and also when you do this this further obliges you to not pay attention on what you're doing and focus on whatever show you're watching or whatever and you know you just let your subconscious mind take over right that's how you really ingrain it into muscle memory now also what I found as a very helpful thing is uh, whenever you have like a solo or a song that is very hard for you at least when you analyze it at first glance you're like this is way over my league 
uh, just try to find something in there like a chunk or a lick that you can already do and start working from there on like start working around it like gradually start growing your area of I can do this and this and this and this because once you get like a first bite onto something it doesn't have to be the beginning or whatever right it can be right in the very freaking middle of the uh, of the solo for example once you find something that you can do you can very easily grow around it right you can just grow inside out or outside in whatever you you uh, direction you you chose to go into but this is yet another helpful uh, tip in my opinion right so uh, another one is always raise your bar uh, higher what I mean by this is harder songs and faster speeds than the the targeted ones which are like you know 100% of that solo or that song so what I found in my experience is if this is you know the 100% speed of this original song no matter how much I practice uh, okay it, would, it probably won't be for 100% of the songs and cases but for the majority of them I can never get there no matter how much I practice if that is like the ultimate speed so what I usually do is I try to use this information seeing that I'm always able to approach you know this sort of you know speed of light but never actually go there I tend to raise the bar higher so for example what I try to do is uh, you know force myself to play at a hundred percent then 120 even 150 percent right depending on how fast the uh, the whole thing is already but always try to go a little bit above so that when you come back down it seems like you know playing at 80% of what you can already do and what you've been doing for the last five minutes or 10 minutes. It's a uh, really helpful hack, uh, to say the least. And also, uh, again, if uh, if all your life you wanted to play Guns N' Roses songs, which is great by, by all means necessary, but you never seem to quite get there, try to at least attempt uh, playing a Joe Satriani song or a Steve Vai song or an Ingbe Mountain song or I don't know Michelangelo Badio, Andy James, just a few licks. Obviously, don't go for for the whole song if you're not interested in them. But just try a few licks. Try the, the try a few of the more technically advanced, uh, you know, uh, stuff that's out there, so that when you come back to your favorite uh, licks and solos from Slash they no longer scare you that much right so again this is just a mental hack okay uh one other thing that i keep bumping into uh when discussing with different people is that you know they want to play something and this lick is completely new from everything they've done before and it happens to me as well and i can tell you from my experience no matter how much time i've, I've been playing the guitar if i have a lick which is um, sufficiently different from everything that I have at this point in my baggage, I literally sound like the most idiotic beginner out there. It's like I've never played a note in my life. It's like I'm, you know, by... Almost like this, right? Maybe sometimes I'm exaggerating, but... I even have uh, situations like, like these, for example, if I'm used to, uh, you know, doing things in, for example, alternate picking and I uh, discover a lick which I think it's alternate picking and I struggle with it and there's no way in hell and, you know, I later discover that, ah, this passage used economy uh, picking and I've never used economy picking before. The first, uh, you know, times that I'm uh, attempting this it's a complete disaster but a lot of people get scared by this and they quickly abandon it because you know they go into their favorite stuff that they want to learn and level up and they find themselves just tumbling and not being able to even play it at I don't know uh, 60 BPM and the, the leg probably is at 220 what I found in my experience is that progress is never linear it's always sort of exponential so you might have a complete struggle the first five minutes but the next 10 minutes 
are everything that makes a difference. For example, you might be struggling for five minutes, completely, you know, crashing and burning. And by the 10 minute mark, you're already kind of like, okay, I'm beginning to get this. And like, if you stick to it and you don't quit, you know, prematurely, half an hour later, you're already, you know, uh, practicing in a loop on the metronome. It might not be very fast, but you're practicing. And guess what? It's almost always the case within a few days, you went from zero to hero, like one of the old sayings is, right? So again, I've had countless experiences where there was something I thought I'll never in my life be able to play it, not even at half speed. And all it took was a few minutes of not giving up, then a few you know, hours practicing it. And within a couple of days, I was playing along with the original. Sometimes I was missing, sometimes I wasn't, but I was already there, right? It was just a matter of, uh, you know, just perfecting it a tad to, you know, be able to 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 play it decent for any cover that I want to uh, do mm -hmm. or whatever video I want to have or even play it live. Who knows? So that is another one, and uh, yeah. Also, uh, last but not least. Uh, do not ever bite more than you can chew. And I can tell you a very short example. Uh, back when I first started, you know, picking up the uh, the guitar, I think I was like three months in. And what do I do or what happens to me? I accidentally find this guy on YouTube who's playing like a quadruple guitar. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on, right? And obviously many of you might know this by now, it's Michelangelo Badio playing his quad guitar. And guess what? Just a few days later, I'm on no boundaries, right? I'm like, okay, everything is set up. I click play and let's see the notes. I want to learn the uh, the song, right? Uh, obviously, that would lead to a disaster normally, but guess what? I didn't quit. That was, you know, eons ago and it never demotivated me on the contrary but my point is a lot of times you might think you're not able to play it because here you have the notes or the tabs or the video with the instructor telling you what to do and you see the notes and you're like trying to pick all of those notes and you're just hoping that if you do it uh, you know enough times eventually you'll just be blazing through and in my experience obviously I was three months into my guitar playing, I had no idea of what legato versus alternate picking versus economy versus sweep, all of these things, you know, uh, string skipping were. So what I was doing was I was just looking at the monitor with, you know, that -na 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 tab, uh, animated tab on screen, and I was just trying to, you know, pick those notes. And back then, you know, being so early on into the process, I was just down picking everything. And I just, I was like, how on earth Will you ever get to be like, you know, just down picking everything at blazing speeds? Obviously, I put it aside for a while and, you know, a uh, few months later, I went back to it again. Now I was understanding a few more things and, you know, a few years later, now I was understanding a lot more things. And now I was seeing that, ah, this was a sweep, this was blah, blah, blah. Obviously, you know, dumb me, you would never down pick all those things. But this is just what happens, you know, as I, I mean, I'm just exposing these as uh, things that apparently detract you from what's really going on and might give you a false impression over how high level something might be and how low level your skills are. You might, I mean, it's not that you might, you never are. Uh, you know, in the impossibility of doing and accomplishing anything if you have, you know, two functioning hands or whatever, you know, even these are not a necessity, right? There are plenty of people who are doing amazing things with no arms and so on. So, yeah, if all else fails and this whole video made no sense for you, it's not a problem. Just fucking choose a technique that is useful by itself such as, I don't know, sweep picking. That's one technique that will eventually, you know, if you just go up and down on A minor arpeggio or whatever, it's still better than using some of the warm-up exercises that everyone preaches out there because those will 
more than likely never help you in any real situation. However, an A minor arpeggio will come in handy in all of the places where you have sweep pick, uh, you know, patterns, or just work on a uh, I don't know an alternate picking exercise that will just unlock. Uh, you know both inside and outside picking for you so that you can later just you know at least shred with uh, alternate picking throughout the whole thing if all, el all else fails so yeah at least have this as a goal if you don't have if you don't want to have the goal of uh, learning a song but to you Robert to all of you out there and also to me as a reminder this is the best thing that you could ever do. That's actually what I opened, why I opened this uh, guitar channel. Uh, it was mainly for me to help myself motivate and you know kick myself in the butt by always having something in my backlog and I have like a huge backlog as you've seen most of my covers I mean all of my covers are 80s uh, you know rock and metal and the the primary focus that I have personally again uh, you have your own agenda, right? And I encourage you to have it. But my personal thing is I want to be able to eventually one day play as many songs that I can from Bon Jovi's uh, discography. I already have around, you know, 20 uh, down. So I'm just trying to expand. And probably what I'll do to keep myself motivated again, you know, brain hack, instead of just going randomly and choosing some of my favorites, after I kind of I'm kind of done with uh, most of the, the the songs that I have as favorites I will uh, just try to take each album one by one and go through each and every single uh, you know song out there just to keep myself in check and have like a further uh, developed sense of accomplishment because now I'm no longer just finishing songs but now eventually i'm finishing albums right i can i can just you know as soon as i have one album down i can just sit down and i can play through the whole thing uh whether for youtube or for myself or for anyone else i can just do this for like 30 40 50 minutes whatever the uh, album duration is so that's a great thing which i recommend to all of you but again this video is already super super long I won't hold you any longer that's my best advice at this point and I don't think it will change in the very near future just always have uh, something greater than the technique itself that will keep you motivated otherwise I don't care whose program it is I don't care how uh, good the instructor is at explaining he might do the most wonderful job on earth it is you who will fail to keep that motivation level up and running for a consistent time so that you can progress and not just, you know, get stuck in a loop of always recycling what you did yesterday. And by the time you're warmed up uh, and you're up to speed with what you practiced yesterday, you're already putting down the guitar and, you know, the same goes on and on each day. You're kind of stuck at this plateaued level rehashing things from the past so that was it any other requests you might have i'm open for you know giving you my advice from my personal experience and if you like or dislike or whatever just let me know put it in the comment section below and see you guys next time bye, -bye now let me close this damn thing